take, for example, your vegetable oils. Everything's processed. That's a processed oil, the vegetable seed oils. They're all processed. So when we do experiments and try to take tissues and try to make it malignant, which means make it become a cancerous growth, right? What, what, what we'll be putting on top of it? We're putting omega-6. We're putting vegetable seed oils when we're doing research in animal studies and whatnot. So why are we eating it? And we know that this is not going to be good for us. And there's so many studies, which of course, you know, uh, we can uh, in the future, or we can talk about vegetable seed oils, but this is one of another big culprit. So we've got this processed foods, high and simple carbs, and then vegetable seed oils to top it off. And I think that that has a big problem because I've seen that my patients who continue to consume vegetable seed oils have small, dense LDL particles. And in the beginning, let's not forget, these are LDL particles. They should be large and fluffy. They become small and dense as a result of, I'll just tell you briefly, there are five major things that, that I've found that, that, that seem to be doing this in my patients. Number one is glycation of the LDL molecule. That means having high sugars. Your A1C is high, your blood sugar is high, then you're going to get small dense LDL. Number two is omega-6, eating a diet full of omega-6. Number Because the omega-6 will go into the LDL particle and displace some of that cholesterol, replace it, and then that omega-6 undergoes what is known as lipid oxidation or lipid peroxidation. When you get that LDL molecule that is carrying omega-6, it's going to very easily get oxidized. Normal healthy LDL particles don't get oxidized that much. It's your oxidized LDL. What makes it oxidized is it's carrying a lipid on it. It's getting lipid peroxidation. In fact, every cell in your body, the cell membranes have fat. And when you eat too much omega-6, vegetable seed oils, all your cells are replacing the fat in the plasma lemma of your blood, uh, of your of, of your cell membranes, and it affects your, your your function because the cell membranes is is what controls what comes in and what goes out, and you get dysfunction. All those receptors are in the membranes, and they get dysfunctional. You want to have dysfunctional enzymes, dysfunctional membranes. Eat a lot of omega six. Yeah, no, real a lot of interesting points again. Um, let's talk a little bit about seed oils because you brought it up. I think uh, it's an interesting thing to talk about. Uh, I've done a lot of content about it. I've, I've tried to investigate a lot of these questions that people ask and go over the evidence systematically. I found that people have very strong beliefs about seed oils, but I've been surprised often looking at actual scientific evidence on seed oils. So uh, we probably won't have time to touch on everything, but you touched on seed oils and cancer. I have looked into it. I have not found a relationship between increased intake of seed oils or omega-6s and higher incidence of cancer. When we look at cancer mortality, for example, there's a study that looked at half a million people followed over, I believe it was 16 years, and people who cooked with canola or corn instead of butter had lower cancer mortality compared to, 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 to those who cooked with butter. And this was adjusting for the usual confounders, things like BMI, smoking, exercise, other food components. Um, so I have not found hmm. a, body, a body of human evidence pointing to higher risk of uh, cancer and <laughs> seed oils. I'm open to it, but I'm curious if you've seen uh, no. evidence of this. I haven't seen it in human studies, but I have seen that in, in, uh, in the lab, we can create those changes, but that doesn't translate to, to increased cancer rates in, in human beings due to omega-6 um, intake in the form of seed oils. Um, seed oils do have, some of them have this gas that they use in the processing. It's a thing it's called hexane. And there's a lot of that in there and that is carcinogenic, but I have not actually seen in human studies, as you point rightly pointed out, um, that element. Now, when we look at visceral fat in South Asians, because South Asians have tofu, and I look at the diet and I say, okay, well, what is it that's giving these people insulin resistance, visceral fat in South Asians? Because South Asians have some of the highest incidence of tofu thin on the outside, fat on the inside, and they have a high degree of coronary artery disease. And they're not 
terribly obese. The body mass index is usually pretty normal. And when we tease down the dietary changes they've made, it's because they have started consuming a lot of vegetable seed oils. And I've seen that. So it, South Asians tend to eat too much carbs. No doubt about it. They eat too much carbs. Number two is that vegetable seed oils. And you're right. It's hard to tease all these things out in a dietary uh, study. It is hard to do that. Um, so you are right that the, the, the whole team is split right now on vegetable seed oils. Um, I'm swaying a little bit on this side because it is ultimately processed. And um, I don't like anything that's so processed. I, I mm. want to try to, and I'm, I'm not going to wait another 30 years to show me that as you're right about the vegetable seed oils. So I just get rid of them now. So my advice to most of my patients is not to eat excessive amounts of vegetable seed oils to try to minimize that as much as possible. So, and what do you recommend instead? So in um, butter in small amounts, I have no problem with butter in small amounts. And I've found that my patients who actually eat butter, their particle sizes, you'd think that, oh my God, this is so bad for them. The LDL is going to go up. Yes, it goes up just a little bit, but the particle sizes actually become larger and the pattern goes from B to A. So I'm not too concerned about it. Um, so I do tell them to eat a little bit of butter. South Asians, I tell them to eat a little bit of ghee. So cook with a little bit of ghee, not large amounts, small amounts of ghee, and a little bit of coconut oil as well. And the coconut oil has to be extra defined coconut oil. And Super. that's the oil that, yeah. Yeah, really interesting because I have questions about this specifically. So um, I think one thing that, uh, might be a confounder here is that when people switch fats, but they also lose weight overall because they're fasting, they're cutting out ultra processed foods, the weight loss is going to have some effect on uh, the, the lipoproteins as well. So it's hard to know in a, in a patient, it's hard to know exactly which of the many changes is causing the, right, the specific uh, observation. Um, we have a lot of comparisons between seed oils and butter and ghee direct comparisons in randomized trials, looking at visceral fat, looking at liver fat. In every trial that I can remember, the seed oils beat butter, coconut oil, or ghee for liver fat, for visceral fat. And this is matching calories again. In general, the seed oils, we tend to see a reduction in liver fat, varying degrees depending on everything else. Uh, and with, seed, with saturated fat in general, either stays the same or goes up. The, 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 the liver fat uh, deteriorates, uh, increases. Now, this is, of course, dependent on overall, if the person is losing a lot of weight and eating more butter, then I would expect that to trump the effect of butter. Um, but just the fats by, by themselves, this is consistent in randomized trials that I've seen. I don't know if you've seen anything going in the opposite direction or not. Yeah, I, I've seen some of those studies. I wasn't too convinced. Um, uh, I, I think that basically... I look at my cardiology studies that came out in the past where we took patients and we took away the saturated fats and substituted them with vegetable seed oils and the LDLs came down, but they had a higher mortality rate. So th those are like in the Minnesota study. And then there's a, a subsequent one as well. And, and I just think that lowering the LDL definitely happened. Mm -hmm. And the group that had saturated fat had higher, but the outcomes were, were different. So, mm -hmm. you know, in my cardiology studies, I have found that it's not just the total LDL I'm concerned. I'm looking at visceral fat. I'll do some deeper dive into those studies um, to see if there's real correlation or not. And mm -hmm. what is the mechanism? Because there may be other compounding factors that are going on here. Yeah. With those the, studies the... are very difficult. Uh, yeah. So these are, I've seen maybe four or five of these trials comparing seed oils to uh, either coconut oil or butter or, or ghee. And everyone that I remember, that was, this was a result. Uh, it's interesting. An advantage for seed oils. Um, we can touch on Minnesota if, if we have time. And, but another thing that I wanted to, to talk about, um, this, this idea that this, the omega-6 increases the level of small dense LDL. Right, I think you. I think you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen that. Small dense LDL. Um, I've looked at. I've seen a, a couple of trials also comparing again isocalorically 
omega-6 seed oils, I think it was sunflower seed oil, compared to um, a more saturated fat uh, rich food like butter, for example, uh, the sunflower seed oil tends to reduce all, all sizes of LDL, uh, large, small, intermediate LDL sizes. Um, so that's, that's what I've seen in terms of, of that evidence. I haven't seen a, a study where seed oils raised LDL. Um, but I think an, another thing that to, to bear in mind is that for most Americans, for most Westerners, seed oils are not being consumed pouring some canola oil in a salad, right? It's, no. it's just included in ultra-processed junky foods. That's so right. that's absolutely right. crucial. Again, again, going back to this distinction of the quality of the foods, absolutely crucial. If you're getting your seed oils from eating um, potato chips or whatever, whatever it is, uh, donuts that happen to see, have some seed oil in there, then I would expect weight gain, visceral fat to go up, uh, lipoproteins to get worse, yes. Um, and so that's why those studies are so hard to interpret because, you know, what is what else is happening in that cohort of patients? Or is it only the difference in omega-6 intake only? Or how is that omega-6 getting in? So you've got to really do a deep dive into that. And it, it, it gets very complicated to really see that, okay, was it the omega-6 in the donut? Or is it the, 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 the processed flour? Or is it the frying process? Is it the ages that was there? What are the factors going on there? So you lump it all together and you have, oh yeah, omega-6 is no good for you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is why I find the, the, these trials helpful. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's all the evidence. I mean, real world evidence that absolutely counts and, and how people find these foods and how they cook them and in what context, all of this matters. But it's precisely for this reason that I find uh, these studies informative is because they allow us to separate these factors. Is it seed oils that are damaging or is it the fact that seed oils usually come in these ultra processed foods? And so the two things track together and the evidence that I've seen consistently points to this uh, latter case that seed oils are, are a uh, uh, tracking a, a junk diet, a, a, an unhealthy diet. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, when they're them. Yeah, when they're using that, you are so right. You are so right about that. You are so right. You are so right about that. That's why all this is going to take more teasing out, more time. In the meantime, I just tell people, look, eat real food. Eat real food. Don't put anything that that's made in a factory. Because if you look at an oil processing plant, a seed plant, it looks like a like something out of uh, Saudi Arabia. It looks you know it looks like a re oil refinery itself because it in a form it is. I I just feel like having a more natural diet without mm. relying on factory made foods is going to serve my patients well. And I'm tracking the data. So just like how I have evolved in what I've done, I may come out in the future and say that omega-6 may not be as bad. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I, ap I appreciate the openness. I think that's, that's a, mm. a, sign of, a, a sign of quality that we are open to, to hearing yeah. arguments. And I really appreciate, by the way, your time, and this is so valuable for people to see, so crucial, because I try to have these conversations and a lot of people don't want to have them. They don't want to talk to anyone that they, where they perceive there's a difference of, of views or, or people have seen different evidence. That's so strange to me. That's, this is what science is all about. Let's compare the evidence we've seen and, and we talk. Have to. We have to. And yeah. based on that evidence, we change. So we, we've done that and we have to continue to do that. No, hats off. You, and we have to have people like you who's going to be looking at all these uh, studies and, and reminding us that, hey, in this study, it was like this or whatever. Uh, we have to have it. And I think that this is going to be a great, maybe we can revisit the same area in a, in a couple of years. We can touch on the Minnesota trial real quick, just because it's a, such a common question and I've, I've looked into it. So um, I don't know what your what your recollection is of the, of the trial, but they had, they had, there was a massive trial. It was 9,000 people. And they planned to follow them for about four years, give or take, because you can explain this better than I can. You need statistical power to detect a difference in heart attacks, right? You can't detect it over, you know, a couple of weeks or something like that. And then what happened, and I don't know if you have a different, um, if you've seen different, different information on this, but what happened was they lost 75%, I believe it was 75, of their participants during the first year. And overall in the trial, they lost 83% of their participants. And so they didn't have statistical power to detect anything. 
And in fact, every outcome was no statistically, no statistical significance between the two groups. I don't think there was a single thing that was significantly different between the two. Um, I know that people talk about the mortality. Being, I think it's a trend. Like if you look at the graph, it looks like the mortality might be trending. Again, with this, with this attrition rate, when you lose 83% of your participants, really hard to interpret. And then there's additional questions about the, the trans fats, because back then in the intervention group, they were reducing saturated fat, but increasing trans fats. So there's a whole debate about that. Um, but in my opinion, the, the Minnesota trials is almost impossible to, to, to get anything firm out of just because of these, these issues. Um, so I just think it's interesting to, yeah. It is, it is true. Uh, that study is clouded with a lot of controversy. Uh, a lot yeah. of that data didn't come out for years later. Um, so it took so many years and more and more, as you said, uh, you, you take statistical analysis and just work on it, work on it, work on it. So uh, it was suggestive though, but it's not definitive. I don't go by any one particular study, um, mm -hmm. but it's one of some that I looked at. And uh, to try to, again, you see, you have a hypothesis that, okay, I don't like, artificial things. I don't like processed foods. I don't like anything made in a factory. Mm -hmm. Where can I find data to support me? You see? So these are the biases that we all have. And am I biased? Of course I'm biased because I want all natural things only, natural foods only as much as possible. So I go out looking for those kinds of data. And there's a couple of other studies, which I don't have with me, but I, I wish one day we can, and we can have a special session just on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to discuss it with you in more detail. But yeah. in, in general, yeah, that was a study that kind of perked my interest and I looked at it and then the details the the details are more important, as you pointed out. When you have such a high attrition rate, you lose a lot of statistical power. Yeah, and there's going to yeah. be a lot of bias. Yeah.